the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Hello and welcome back. This is the Sports Vote Campaign Apple Podcast for Sunday, December 19th, 2021. Season 4, Episode 5. Here we go again. No games, no gambling. So back in the 1990s in the computer business I had in Arizona, I did business with the Indian tribes. Uh, Not saying that means anything for our moment right now, but uh, I do recall uh, quite a bit of business with them in their casino operations and all of that. So it's kind of uh, interesting how things come back around. Um, We did a lot of audits on their computer purchases to see that their contractors were not ripping them off. And actually, we found that they were ripping them off pretty badly. Okay, so uh, DraftKings, what we want right now from this stock cratering that continued again last week is for a major partner to walk away. Uh, Especially with all this other trouble going on, I guarantee you that they're getting nervous. Um, We're going to see in the next couple of months how all this works out if this capitulation continues, but the uh, look ahead is not too good for them right now. The Seminole tribes uh, in Florida have ceased uh, operating their sports book, uh, not not taking bets or accepting deposits anymore. Um, The uh, first house party that I went to with the Hero Club in San Francisco was uh, DocuSign had just gone public, and uh, the CEO was a friend of Jeff Hazlett. Um, They got basically cut in half not too long ago because um, guidance pushed down the numbers this is something that you never see because they always uh, pimp the numbers and then go back and restate them later. So if they had to push the guidance down, that means that the uh, forward look is really bad and bad enough that they can't exaggerate it without getting uh, egg on their face. So I see this as a forward indicator of the economy going down severely because DocuSign is kind of an infrastructure play for the broader economy because they are a transaction facilitator. So uh, be prepared for that however you can. To the lying troublemakers and haters, including those who have lied to government authorities and others, uh, I'm just going to say again, your day's going to come. It's only a matter of time. I want you to show me one example of any market in the history of mankind that has survived what we have, including no money in or out for years. How can that possibly be a Ponzi scheme when there's been no money in or out for years? Send the proof to help at allsportsmarket.com, and I will publish it everywhere that I can publish it. You will not find it because it does not exist. Um, And this uh, fact that we're still alive through all these incredible circumstances, especially the last couple of years, about two and a half years, It's just an indicator of how powerful this idea truly is and what's going to happen when it's fully uh, implemented as designed. So uh, the uh, Trump new SPAC media uh, con job (laughs) grifter in chief campaign is uh, now being examined by a multiple of regulators. Uh, So uh, the whole SPAC thing is a scam. DraftKings is a SPAC. There's a whole bunch of others. Um, the uh, Nikola, I believe it was, the guys that pushed a truck down the hill. All of this is just, it's unbelievable to me that the SEC would sign off on these things, which don't require the due diligence that's normal when you go public, yet they uh, try to create a reason to destroy us and when, in fact, there's no basis in the law for doing so. So that's pretty... Pretty hypocritical. Pretty hypocritical. It's absolutely, completely, and totally hypocritical. Um, the billionaire Co- uh, Coke Group is suing the FTC over antitrust enforcement. Um, this is just a, uh, and uh, this this is what led me to the idea again about countersuing the SEC for uh, a number of things, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, again, their case is not going to stand on the no action just by itself. It's never going to stand. A jury is never going to understand that. I've made that point uh, very, very clear to uh, uh, Chad Alper and the attorneys working on it that this is the point to focus on above all because I'm I'm absolutely certain that it would never survive the inspection of a jury. So anyhow, um, we are moving towards a settlement of this. They feel very... Um, um, confident that this is going to be resolved sooner rather than later and in a very equitable fashion for us, meaning a zero assessment for those of you that are hoping for 
for something other than that. Um, I guarantee you that if we should decide, or actually Alper should decide, I'm not going to be the decider of this uh, to countersue the SEC, that uh, them abusing us as a startup with our history of regulatory approaches going back about 15 years, lots of money, lots of time, um, is is go- can be spun as a PR win for us. I absolutely guarantee you. Um, it's it will be a reason to get our case out there for a league to let us uh, do a fundraise for them, and it'll be a bigger press hit than Zach was on Squawk Box, which is the biggest thing we ever had, and frankly, it's about the biggest thing you can ever get in the financial world. Um, this is how Trump got his start: is by lawsuits in the in the press, and he's been riding that his entire career. Uh, performative litigation, I would call it. In our case, I don't see it as performative because we have an actual claim. It's not just to file a case to file a case and clock things up or to make a press hit out of it. Um, I see it as powerful, if not more powerful, than our SIPA efforts were in California, which basically kicked everything off. Without SIPA, we would never have gotten the press machine going in California back when we did, back in, I guess it was 2016 is when all that started. Um, This is also a way to gain leverage over the uh, SEC to even get a better uh, resolution of the case. Uh, and again, solid PR hit, solid ability to get our name out there and get the news back in our direction um, and all of that. But there's a lot of pieces to it that, um, you know, I have I have promised Alper I'd defer to him on this, and I'm not going to be the one that says it's the right or wrong thing to do. All I'm going to do is collect the survey results, which um, ends at the end of this month. So if you're going to put your name in the hat, please do so by then. Um, then I'm going to turn it over to him, and he will announce his decision by the end of January. Just so you know, this would be the first lawsuit in my entire life that I would have ever been the plaintiff. I've, I don't go around attacking people. It's never happened. I'm the one that gets attacked. I don't attack anybody. So um, this would be number one, first lawsuit as a plaintiff ever. Um, Evergrande defaulted on its debt, uh, according to Fitch, just marked them as default, I think, yesterday. Um, this is going to uh, spread. So this goes back to economy again, global economy. Um, yeah, so if you uh, remember the uh, the gentleman in Brooklyn, uh, Steiner, who I visited with, he wrote a book called You Gotta Have Balls. Um, I'm mentioning that because uh, that's what needs to happen with us if we decide to go against the SEC as a plaintiff, basically, in a class action. Brian Williams ended his career um, by pointing to some very um, valid points about darkness in the, in the nation. He's right, absolutely right, spot on. Uh, lots of darkness out there. It's, uh, it's worse than I've ever seen it. Uh, we uh, filed a circuit, uh, Ninth Circuit brief uh, in the, uh, the Peon case, Liar Leon the Peon, and uh, so he's going to be writing a big fat check here uh, pretty soon. In order to answer that, and then we get to put another brief after that, and this ball will just roll on and on and on and on and on and on and on. We'll see just exactly how many tens of thousands of dollars more he wants to put into this. He's got to be getting close to a hundred thousand out of pocket at this point. So keep it up, bud. It's your money. You're never going to get it back. So the possible claim against the SEC would be something along the lines, class action, something along the lines of, uh, we've actually got 30 people here. I've got um, several points in the outline where I'm incrementing the numbers. We've got 30. The typical nominal floor that I've been able to find is about 40. So we're not very far off. Um, You know, 30, we can get to 40 if we got 30 already. So what would the claim be? It would be ASMers, you know, the people who would uh, attach themselves to the case officially and similar, similarly situated people in the United States and even abroad. So we can take, um, you know, named parties from outside the, the country. We'll just have to, it's a different way to account for them in the case. So it would be non-enforcement of the Commodity Exchange Act against the gambling operators, non-enforcement of the Securities Exchange Acts against the gambling operators, non-enforcement of the 1961 Wire Act against the gambling operators, no action on our no action for six years. It's coming up on very very soon. Malicious prosecution against us and whatever else we can come up with, thereby creating direct and indirect harms to us and other similarly situated people. Again, this is a guaranteed press bonanza. I'm sure of it. 
We ensure we accuse the SEC of harming the entire population, not just uh, the people on our list from uh, ASM, you know, our traders. Do I believe this? Yes, absolutely, 100%. I do believe this. This is not something uh, put together as a as a random strategy. This is something that I would say is real, and it would throw a very hard punch against gambling. So if you uh, have any um, interest in this, please com- complete the form link that's in the uh, outline here. Uh, you cannot win the Super Bowl by just playing defense. And maybe we can add in the CFTC and Justice Department. Um, I sent the request out to the 500 most recent um, active accounts. And so far, there's 40 responses. 30 of them are yes. So that's a good result. Um, Again, incentivizing the Indian tribes. That's something else we need to take a look at. Um, This is something Neil Brown mentioned a long time ago. But I don't think we can do that until we get the train moving first. Um, Chevy Thriftmaster, that's another 1950s style. Again, I'm just going back to this uh, theming is accurate, that I said it was accurate, um, that if we would just lean our message or our format towards that good old days kind of look and feel that um, it would be very well received. And you're starting to see these old old car uh, models being retuned, put back together and, and uh, modernized. And I think there's going to be a whole lot more of it, actually. You're going to see a bunch of it. Um, the abortion law configuration, going back to this again in Texas, uh, now the California governor wants to use it for gun control measures. I'm still of the mind that there's something legally here for us in terms of standing, uh, being able to create something similar for the gambling stuff. Uh, it just keeps coming around, and I don't think that that's just a random thought uh, because I'm not given to random thought adventures. So the transition to Alper is becoming more structured and detailed. Several times I've stopped it from taking over because I don't want anyone to take on excessive liability. I've tried to bear as much risk as possible for all parties as long as possible. Um, this past week or so, uh, I discussed this with Alper, and he understands all this and wants to take the risks. So the main trigger to take over is the resolution of the SEC case. Along with, like I said, along with legal counsel, they feel this can be settled very favorably and much sooner rather than later. So that means the transition to Alper could happen much sooner than the end of 2023. While our vision and goals are aligned, Alper has a very different idea on how to move on from here. I'm not even all uh, completely sure what that is, but that's okay. That's that's fine. I, I don't expect his tactics to be the same. Um, so just keep that in mind. It will change when he takes over. And the key to all that is the resolution of the SEC case. I've always seen my role as an incubator of the idea and bearer of the risks that nobody would or could take. Many here may not realize this, but I told Alf, everyone Alper would take over my role when we met more than 15 years ago in Costa Rica. If you allow a false statement to stand and don't correct it given the opportunity or worse yet, repeat that false claim knowing that it's false, you're just as much a liar and deceiver as the person who made it and you're going to suffer the consequences in this life and the next. Believe that or not, it's a fact. Now, you've been warned again as far as another thing, and I think this applies more towards uh, Leon, liar Leon the peon. Uh, extortion will get you to- tossed into the lake of fire, so you're making a pretty darn um, big bet on your eternal future. that I've always said this has been extortion. I said it from the day the case was filed. It was extortion. It's extortion. That's what this is. It hasn't worked. What it's done is it's put him at least, I would say, at least $50,000 out of pocket so far, at least, and maybe upwards of 100000 which was, what I think, what he was after in the beginning. So that didn't quite work out, did it? Um, the California cannabis market is legal markets on the... Um, Sorry, that's a little further down here. Oh, that yeah, use 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 of the uh, banking system, basically cashless ATM payments to um, sell um, in the legal cannabis markets. This is a this is exactly the same thing go- going on with gambling. What I'm talking about with the Wire Act, you can't use the banking system because cannabis is still I- illegal federally. So that means no no federal banks, which is. There's, there's just no way to do that. And even local credit unions and local small banks still use the national networks. So there's a crackdown going on because the cannabis people like in California and other places where it's uh, legal are using the banking system to pay for cannabis and you can't do that because it's uh, federally illegal. That is exactly the same thing that is going on right now every second with the gambling operators because regardless of the state – uh, legality, the federal law, Wire Act, 
is still in place, so that means you can't use the banking system. So we'll see if anybody catches on to this um, other than those guys in Florida. So the second round of NFT uh, tests are going to launch on the 1st of January, tw- uh, 2022, a New Year's Day. Uh, last test was in the summertime. Things have changed quite a bit. Popularity has soared. Um, and also the mechanisms have gotten a lot better, including being able to cut the fees down to uh, very little to nothing. So I'm going to give this another run because last time the fees were actually more than the sale price. And I, I didn't discover that until I asked the customers what they had paid. I had no way of knowing this. So this has all changed. Uh, so we're going to give it another uh, test on um, starting January 1st here, uh, New Year's Day. So the um, yeah, the Texas abortion law, this is, I think this is a restate. Yeah, the, the Texas abortion law allowing... Um, people, the the public citizens to basically file cases on behalf. It's kind of a way of leveraging the public to to stop abortion by allowing them to have standing so that, again, I think there's something here. Um, The ASM NFTs are going to drop on, you can go to sportsharenft.com, sportsharenft.com. It's going to be using the Polygon blockchain accepting uh, USDC and Ethereum for payment. So USDC is a stable coin, one-to-one, so allowing it to price basically directly in dollars. And the big news, obviously, is that sports is getting very wobbly on this uh, surge of coronavirus. I have seen um, lots of game cancellations and reschedules in the last 10 days. No games is no sports betting. That's not true of us. That is a huge, huge difference. Without any games, they're dead in the water. So um, Florida is working on uh, a similar kind of challenge using the Texas laws for critical race theory. Again, this is the discussion about California uh, using it for uh, anti-gambling. So our tally right now on the on the um, the class action is 30 yes against 40 responses so far. Sent out to 500 most recent traders, and again. Uh, thank you to all you illegal gambling, and when I say illegal, 1961 Wire Act, all you in- illegal gambling promoters for spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to addict the public to your corruption and vile sinful trash. Once we get our first order, a few press releases, and we will begin taking all your customers, and there will be nothing you can do to stop it. Back where you belong, to the margins with the cockroaches, you will go. Our ad budget will be zero. See Tesla and SpaceX. How many ads do you see? One order that fits the criteria to run the press campaign, and we're off to the races. That's all it takes. Back to the original claim. Bet versus invest, and invest wins. Okay, metaverse. Bad, bad, bad. I am a complete... I gave up on Facebook a long time ago. Mark Zuckerberg is in the process of destroying the entire world. Uh, He's obviously affected the political system very negatively, amongst a bunch of other things, corrupting people with the propagation of bad material and then the suppression of good material. This is evil and terrible, awful stuff. I'm not getting involved. I'm not going to have anything to do with it. So if uh, if Albert wants to go down that road, that'll be up to him. I am dead cold on anything Facebook-related. I have been for many years. I haven't had a Facebook account in more than – it's going on 10 years. I shut it down. The gambling hypsters love making a big deal out of the 2021 numbers versus 2020. Hello, sports was shut down last year, and it could be again very soon. So what would you expect from a bunch of lying criminals? Gambling is a scam, always has been, always will be. Um, California Pot Company, yeah, I already said that. Um, this is um, They're talking about industry collapse. This is exactly the same issue with off sports, short sports books. They say that the uh, illegal business has better prices and all that. This is exactly what I have said. They are equivalent uh, problems there because the offshore books have better lines. They don't report taxes. So it's the same thing. However, the Wire Act trap. So if you enforce the Wire Act, then you have to shut everybody down. If you don't enforce the Wire Act, then the offshore guys beat beat you in the marketplace, which is why they're having to spend so much. Basically, they're giving money away by leaps and I mean by handfuls, truckloads, in order to try to capture these customers because they can't beat them on the price. They have there's a price preference automatically for the offshore people. So want to tap down inflation and create lasting jobs? Sports investing, not sports betting. Gambling is for losers. There is no set number of plaintiffs, like I said on um, this idea of the class action, but it looks like 40 is is the nominal floor based on historical cases. So 
We're about 75% of the way there at this point. So please consider joining so I can present at least a minimum package to Alper for consideration. The survey will close on Friday, December 31st, and Alper will report his decision on Monday, January 31st, uh, 31st 2022, which is a month later. So a, la- a final comment here, blockchain on blockchain. Blockchain is a bolt-on security system for ASM, and that has been laid out for years. Further, our open market idea was laid out before blockchain ever appeared in the world. You can see it in our patent documents. We do not chase trends. I still am of the mind, and it will not change, that that the crypto coins are a con job, just like gambling. Meta is a dangerous delusion creator, which I will have no part of. Alper can change these directions in the future, or the board, or whoever he appoints. If he so desires, I will not. And we are fortunate to still be here, given the events of the last roughly two, two and a half years, if you go back to the filing of the SEC case. Please do not send me messages unless you are going to help us. I mean, I mean this uh, to me privately. Do not send me messages if you're not intending to help us move forward with your time and treasure in the present moment, okay? What you did years ago has no bearing, no more than it does for me. If I wasn't working on this every day and the other members of the team working on this every day, there would be nothing here. So you don't get to talk about what you did five years ago and just throw stones and feel free to openly remark about things and, and basically sit back and throw rocks. I've had my fellow spectators. It's been very, very difficult to get this project really from the beginning. It's been extremely difficult, but the last two and a half years have been beyond difficult to hold all this stuff together. And I have no time, space, or interest in hearing from you unless you're going to commit your time and your treasure to helping us move this project from where we are right now. Nothing counts before now. The work has to be done now. So, If you uh, want to keep up with all the latest resources, they're in the show notes as always. And also, uh, if you want to support this work, there's also a way to do that. 140% of anything that you contribute will uh, go towards educational needs in the United States. And then there are also some special bonuses you'll receive if you forward the receipt uh, to the help address, email address. So thank you for your time and attention, and I'll speak with you again in two weeks. Bye now.